Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a lecture in a series of lectures on undergraduate abstract algebra based on my book, Algebra in Action. The topic of this lecture is Z mod NZ, integers mod N with addition as an example of a group. A group is a non-empty set with one operation, and this operation has to have four properties. It has to be closed. If you take two elements and operate them, we usually say multiply them, you get another element in the set. The operation has to be associative, x, y, times z should be x times y, z. We should have an identity element, some element that when you multiply it by other elements, nothing happens. And each element needs to have an inverse. Each element has a friend that if you multiply them together, you get that identity element. So by looking at that definition, it might not be clear to you that groups appear all over the place in mathematics. And we have started this series of lectures by looking at examples. The examples in previous videos has been D8, the symmetries of a square. The more general version of D8 would have been D2n, which is the symmetries of a regular n-gon. Another set of examples we look at were symmetric groups, Sn. Those are this permutations of one true n. You have n objects and you find all their permutations and those permutations form a group. That was a special case of what I called perm omega, which is the set of one to one onto functions from any set omega to itself. Omega could be an infinite set and you would still get a group of by an infinite group. In this video, we want to think about another example, which is integers with addition modulo n. A Z mod NZ is the notation I will use for that. You start with an integer greater than one. So two, three, five, 17, 18. Then Z mod NZ is the collection of numbers zero, one through N minus one. What's the operation? The operation is going to be addition modulo n. So what does that mean? It can't be normal addition because if you take two elements in this set and add them, if they're large enough, then you will end up outside of this set. We have changed the definition of addition here. If you take two elements in z mod n z, then I'm going to tell you what a plus b is. You might think you know how to add already. You learned that in first or second grade, but we're now going to tell you that a plus b is going to be defined differently. a plus b is going to be the remainder of the usual a plus b, when divided by n. When you take a number and divide it by n, you can make sure that the remainder is either 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1. The remainder can always be less than n, because if you divide and the remainder is more than n, then that means you didn't finish the division. You could have taken more n's out of that number and got a remainder between 0 and n minus 1. In group theory, we just use one symbol for the operation. And in this case, we are going to use plus. And to a first-time listener, that could be confusing because you have the usual plus, like 5 plus 7 is 12. And then depending on the situation, we might be using that same plus for adding mod some particular n. And you have to know from the context what that is. And that can be confusing. Let's look at an example. Someone has picked for us n equals 6. And we are looking at z mod 6z, which consists of the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But these are really remainders of uh, numbers after you divide them by 6. And so, for example, what would be 3 plus 5? Now, 3 plus 5 in first grade was 8. But now you take out as many 6s as possible, because n is 6, and you get 2 as the remainder. In this world, in the world of z mod 6z, 3 plus 5 is 2. And what's 2 plus 4? Well, 2 plus 4, you might think of it as 6, but not here, because you have to take the remainder when you divide by 6, and 2 plus 4 becomes 0. One question we might have is, does, for example, 1 have an inverse? Well, what was an inverse? Inverse was one of the elements of the set that if you add to one, you should get the identity. But then the question is, what's the identity? A lot of times we thought of identity as one because we was thinking of the operation as multiplication. And so one times something doesn't change it. But here the operation is plus. So which one of these elements has the property that when you add it to other things, nothing happens and the answer is zero. So zero is the identity in this group. And then the inverse of one is going to be five. Why? Well, because the inverse of something is something that when you add it, you get zero. And one plus five is zero because one plus five, you might think it's six, but when you divide it by six, the remainder is zero. You also add two plus four is zero. So that says two and four were inverses of each other also. One and five are inverses of each other. Two and four are inverses of each other. Zero is the identity. It's its own inverse. And here three also it's its own inverse because three plus three 
is zero. I want to emphasize that in this group, zero is the identity, not one, and the operation is plus, not multiplication. And that can be confusing, and we will talk about that at the end of this lecture briefly. So Z mod N Z with a plus is either integers module N with addition or integers with addition module N. And there are other notations that other authors use. So Z sub N, Z slash N or Z slash parentheses N are all notation that are used. This Z mod N Z, Z almost divided by N Z might look like an odd thing when we get to quotient groups and learn about how to divide groups, whatever that means, then this notation will make a lot more sense. But for now, we're just thinking of it as notation. I want to give you another example, Z mod 5Z. Here, N is 5. And these are the remainders when you divide by 5, not by 6 anymore. We are in a different world. We're in the world of remainders when you divide by 5. The new A plus B is the remainder of the usual A plus B when divided by 5. And one way to think about that is to put these numbers 0, 1 through 4 on a circle. If you do that, then this addition will take another visual meaning. For example, 1 plus 2 is what? And when you want to add, you just go clockwise. Here's 1. And so you want to go two units clockwise and you'll get to three. And so one plus two is three, which is not a surprising thing. What's three plus four? You start at three and you go four units. So you go one, two, three, four units clockwise and you get to two. So three plus four is two. This is not a good way of modeling pizzas. Three pizzas and four pizzas are not going to be two pizzas. But for example, if you had a clock, then Z mod 12 Z would have been a very good model for it. We say two hours after 11 is one. We're saying 11 plus two is one. And that makes sense. It's Z mod 12 Z. What's two plus three? You start at two, you go three units uh, clockwise and you get zero. So two plus three is zero, which means what? Which means that two and three are inverses of each other. We can also do subtraction. When we want to do subtraction, we're going counterclockwise on the circle. What's four minus two? You start at four and you go two units the other way, well, you get two, as you would have expected. You could have, by the way, thought about this in a slightly more complicated way. What's minus two? Well, minus two is a number that if you add to two, you get zero. And in this world, that's three, because two plus three is zero. So four minus two is the same as four plus three. And four plus three, is it seven? No, it's the remainder of seven when you divide it by five. And that's two. Another example, what's three minus four? You start at three, you go counterclockwise four units and you get to four. So three minus four is four. Do you believe that? Yes. Well, what about if I bring minus four to the other side? I get three is four plus four. Is that true? Is four plus four equals to three? Yes, because four plus four is eight in our world, but the remainder when divided by five is three. So that works. Or again, instead of minus four, you could put one because one plus four is zero, minus four is one. So three plus one is four. So it all makes sense. One final question, what's one minus four? Start with one, go counterclockwise four, and you get two. Again, that makes sense because if you bring four to the other side, four plus two is one. This is a part of algebra. Algebra comes from the Arabic word al-jabr, and jabr, jobran, is a word that means when you take a term to the other side, you have to subtract. And so we are doing algebra. We're trying to look at this as a group, but is it a group? Is Z mod N Z with addition mod N a group? And again, I'm using plus without anything to denote that it's different than the usual plus, and that can be confusing, but we don't want clutter. And when you're inside a group, you know what your operation is. First of all, we do have a non-empty set. We have these remainders mod n, and we have an operation addition module n, and we have closure because when you add two elements, when you take the remainder when divided by n, it ends up being between zero and n minus one. We have an identity. Zero is the identity. When you add zero to something, nothing happens. So we do have identity. And we do have the negatives and inverses because we do have something that when you add to k, you get zero, and that's n minus k. N minus K plus K is N. No, when you divide N by N, the remainder is zero. When K is between zero and N minus one, N minus K is also in that range. With, within that range, you always have something that if you add to it, you can get to N and get zero. The only thing that remains is associativity. So the way I have defined it, associativity does not follow. There's other ways of defining Z mod NZ. For example, you can think of it as a set of equivalence classes. So you can say I have the integers and I partition the integers into so many sets. 
One of them is all the elements that uh, have remainder zero when you divide it by n. The other ones are all the numbers that have re remainder one when you divide by n and so forth. And then you define the addition on these sets, not on individual elements. And then there's other things you have to prove. You have to prove that that addition is well-defined, but then you know associativity. But associativity is something that I will have to prove. To prove associativity, I will use the division algorithm for integers, which I've actually been using all along in this lecture without telling you, not too fair. So what is the division algorithm? The division algorithm is that if you've given me any integer, actually positive, negative, any integer, and then you give me an integer greater than one, then I can always divide m by n and get a quotient and a remainder. This is all integers. When I say divide m by n, well, you might say, well, I can always divide, I can get decimals. No, 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 no decimals. You can think of it as you have m objects and you want to divide it among n people and you can do it equally. And then there will be some that's left over. And the remainder is going to be small in the sense that it's going to be less than n. It could be zero, but it won't be as big as n. It will be at most n minus one. This is something that we used right at the beginning when I said, when you want to add these things, you take the remainder when divided by n, and that's a number between zero and n minus one. I assume the division algorithm. To write it a little bit more formally, if you have m an integer and n an integer greater than one, the division algorithm for integers says that there is unique integers q and r, q is the quotient, r is the remainder, such that m is qn plus r. I took m things, divided it among the n people, everyone got q things, and r was the leftover. And that r, the remainder, is between zero and n. It's greater or equal to zero, but less than n. This is called the division algorithm for integers. And I have a video where I proved it. If you like to see a proof of the division algorithm for integers, watch that video. But also much later on in ring theory lectures, we will do this in a much more general fashion and about rings, which are a generalization of integers. We will talk about in which rings we have division algorithms and which rings we do not. But for now, we just need to know this thing about integers, that if you have two integers and one of them is greater than one, you can take this guy, divide it by that and get a quotient and get a remainder. And that remainder is always between zero and minus one. Either believe that or watch the video where I prove this particular thing for integers. To prove associativity, we need that. In fact, as I said, to even define Z mod NZ the way I did, I needed this division algorithm because often I would say, oh, look, you add these and the remainder is this or that. And I acted like that remainder is unique. And that's exactly what a division algorithm tells me, that as long as I want the remainder between zero and minus one, it will be unique. So let's go on and try to prove the associativity. And this is the one somewhat serious proof in this video. I'm going to do this proof. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about the additive notation versus the multiplicative notation, which can be confusing. So even if you're a first time reader and you might not want to go through this proof, I suggest you watch that. A, B, and C are three elements of Z mod and Z. And I want to show that in Z mod and Z, A plus B plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. Now, if these were integers, we already know that. We know that this is true for integers, or at least we are assuming that we know that this is true for integers, and it is, because both of them are A plus B plus C. However, when we take remainders, it's not so clear. It's not so clear when we take A plus B, which means take A plus B, but find its remainder when you divide by N, and then add that to C, which means that add that remainder to C, but then find its remainder when you divide by N, that's the same thing as if you found B plus C, found its remainder when divided by N, and took that remainder, added to A, and then again found the remainder when divided by N. That's not clear. That's what we need to prove. And here, these pluses are in Z mod N Z. So these pluses are talking about the addition mod N. When I say in Z mod N Z, that's the world I'm living in, and that's the addition I'm using. Again, I want to emphasize that that plus sign means a different thing in Z mod N Z than it means in the integers, Z. This blackboard Z means integers. Z mod N Z is our friend Z mod N Z. We have to be careful in this proof because we're going back and forth between the two. When are we talking about addition in integers? When are we talking about addition in Z mod N Z? You might have said, well, why don't you put a circle around that plus in Z mod NZ so that we know it's different. And that would be a reasonable thing to do, but I'm not reasonable. I want you to get used to this jumping back and forth. That's one of the things you learn in algebra is to think about the same object from different points of views and also to think about symbols in context. I want you to get practice with that. 
And that's why I'm making it confusing. The first thing I have to do is find A plus B plus C in Z mod NZ, and then find A plus B plus C in Z mod NZ and see they're the same or not. How am I going to find A plus B plus C in Z mod NZ? First, I have to find A plus B in Z mod NZ. And I do that by using the division algorithm. I take A plus B divided by N and see what the quotient and what the remainder are. And the remainder R1 is what A plus B is in Z mod NZ. And that's a number less than N, but greater or equal to zero. Then what I have to do is to tag that R1, which is what A plus B is in Z mod NZ, and add it to C. How do I do that? So A plus B is R1 in Z mod NZ. Let's remember that. Now I take R1 and add it to C because that's the remainder. And again, R1 plus C, you can divide it by N, you get a quotient and a remainder. Some of those numbers could be the same as before, but they don't have to be. And this new remainder I'm calling R2, and that's also a number greater or equal to zero and less than N. And so A plus B plus C is really this R2. So I found the remainder of A plus B when divided by N, added that remainder to C, and then find the remainder of what I got when divided by N, and that's my R2. Now, what about A plus B plus C? I have to start with B plus C. I use the division algorithm again. This proof is all about the division algorithm. And I'll say that B plus C is NQ3 plus R3 in the integers. These red things I've written down, like B plus C is NQ3 plus R3 in Z, then that's in the integers. So those pluses are the usual second grade pluses. Whereas when we write in Z mod NZ, those are different kinds of addition. Note that the division algorithm not only gives us the, the quotient and the remainder, but says that as long as you make sure that the remainder is greater or equal to zero and less than N, the quotient and the remainder are unique. If I do it or you do it, if I do it Tuesday or if I do it Wednesday, I'm going to get the same answer. Now that I found B plus C, I know that B plus C is R3 in Z mod NZ. Now I've taken take on that R3 and add A to it. I do the division algorithm again. Uh, not a surprise. A plus R3 uh, divide by N, you get a quotient and a remainder R4 and R4 is greater or equal to zero, but less than N. So what? Now I know that A plus B plus C is R4 in Z mod NZ. What was I trying to do? I was trying to show you that in Z mod NZ, A plus B plus C is the same as A plus B plus C. We found each one of those, what they are in Z mod NZ. A plus B plus C is R2, but A plus B plus C is R4. What I need to show you is that R2 and R4 are the same number. And I will do that on the next slide. I'm going to recap. So far, we have that A plus B was NQ1 plus R1. R1 plus C was NQ2 plus R2. I need all of these guys going forward. B plus C was NQ3 plus R3. And A plus R3 was NQ4 plus R4. R1, R2, R3, R4, the remainders were greater or equal to zero and less than N. And what we were aiming for was to show that R2 equals R4. R2 was A plus B plus C in Z mod NZ, and R4 was A plus B plus C, again in Z mod NZ, and I want to show that they're the same, and that would prove associativity. How do I go about it? What I'm really going to use is associativity in the integers. In our world, what's A plus B plus C? So instead of A plus B, I can put NQ1 plus R1. So that's NQ1 plus R1 plus C. But now I know what R1 plus C is. It's NQ2 plus R2, and I can put that, and I can factor an N, and I get that A plus B plus C is N times Q1 plus Q2 plus R2. But I could do this differently. I could say, well, let's first, instead of B plus C, write NQ3 plus R3. And so what I would have is A plus NQ3 plus R3. And now A and that R3 at the end are NQ4 plus R4. And factor and I get N times Q3 plus Q4 plus R4. The division algorithm says that when you take an integer and divide it by something else, as long as you make sure that the remainder is greater or equal to zero, but less than N, then the quotient and remainder are unique. And so now I'm going to ask you, what is the quotient and remainder of A plus B plus C when divided by N? This is the A plus B plus C that we know and love in the integers. If you take that integer and divide it by N, what's the quotient? What's the remainder? And I will say that we've already found that because if you look up here, the first relation we found was that A plus B plus C is N times Q1 plus Q2 plus R2. So we have taken A plus B plus C, divided it among N people, and we got a quotient of Q1 plus Q2 and a remainder of R2. 
and R2 is in the range we want. So it's an actual remainder. And so according to that first relation we found, the quotient is Q1 plus Q2 and the remainder is R2. But we did it a different way and we found a different quotient and a different remainder. We also found that A plus B plus C when divided by N has quotient Q3 plus Q4 and the remainder R4. Because the division algorithm says that the quotient and the remainder are unique, those two quotients have to be the same and those two remainders have to be the same. So Q1 plus Q2 must be the same as Q3 plus Q4, which is true, but I actually don't care about it. And R2 needs to be equal to R4, which is the associativity, and I'm done. I've proved to you that addition is associative. So let me recap and say something about additive notation, and then we will be done. So Z mod NZ with addition mod N is a group. It's a group that has N elements. And this is nice because now you know an example of a group of any order you want, of any size you want. For example, if I say, give me a group of order 47, you will say Z mod 47Z. Give me a group of order 153, Z mod 153Z. That would mean take the integers between 0 and 152. The operation is addition. And when you add, you add mod 153. This is actually a commutative group in the sense that A plus B and B plus A are the same. That's not one of the properties of groups in general. Groups in general do not have to be commutative, but this group is. We like to make new words because that makes us feel smart. And we don't call commutative groups commutative groups. We call them abelian groups. This is named after Norwegian mathematician Abel, who worked on abelian groups. He actually died very young, unfortunately. He rode sled to go see his fiance, and he got pneumonia and died in his 20s. He had much to contribute to all kinds of areas of mathematics, but especially to group theory, and abelian groups are named after him. We think a mathematician has really made it if something is named after them. And not only that, that people don't capitalize that anymore. So abelian is not written with a capital A, but with a little a. When we're using a symbol for a group operation, we can use anything. We can use star, we can use anything. Usually we just write A, B, A times B for the product of A and B. And for all groups, we can use that. But for abelian groups, meaning commutative groups, we sometimes use plus. For example, in Z mod NZ, we're using plus. So plus is a common thing we use in group theory, but we only use it if you know a group is abelian. If a group is abelian, you still could use the product notation. The world won't end if you do that. The AB is a generic thing that we use for all groups. But if you want to emphasize that this group is abelian, you might use plus. But this can be confusing at first. And let me just show you some translations of things with the plus notation and the product notation. We have a multiplicative notation, an additive notation. Again, for abelian groups, you can use either, but for non-abelian groups, groups that are not commutative, you only use the multiplicative notation. So in one, we write A, B. In the other one, we write A plus B. And, and for an abelian group, those could mean the same thing. In third grade, you would have actually loved that if A, B was the same as A plus B. You wouldn't have to remember the multiplication table. But this it can be also a source of confusion. The identity, for both of them, we can call E if you like. In multiplicative notation, we can also write it as one. For additive notation, we would write it as zero because zero plus something doesn't change it. One times something doesn't change it. So one and zero in group theory could be the name for the same thing. Something else, in multiplicative notation, we might write A to the zero is identity. The corresponding statement in additive notation is that zero A is zero. A inverse in a multiplicative notation minus A in additive notation. And the associative uh, law, as we have seen, in the multiplicative notation is A times BC is AB times C. But in the additive notation is A plus B plus C is A plus B plus C. Finally, A to the N in multiplicative notation, what does that mean? A, 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 N times. The same thing in additive notation means A plus A plus A plus A, N times. And that we usually write as NA. So these are different things that mean the same thing, but that can be a source of confusion. But over time, you will get used to it. This was a lecture on Z mod NZ, integer from mod N, as an example of a group. There's further videos on division algorithm, greatest common divisors. The groups of units of Z mod NZ will come up. And then the general linear group, invertible matrices, is next. This is the end of this lecture. I will see you in the next one.